Hello YouTube, this is Salt Cedic here and Sarah back for a new video where today I'm going to be attempting to beat Pokemon Sapphire with only one snow run. Now this is the first challenge for Pokemon I've ever done on my channel before so I hope you guys do enjoy these. Uh, this took me over a week just to record it, like three hours to write the entire script word for word and I haven't bothered editing yet because um, I'm saying the script right now but I'm assuming it'll take me a while because there's over like nine or ten hours of footage I have to go through to cut through so that should take a little bit um, but hope you guys do enjoy these videos if you're wondering where I was I was busy recording this video uh, hope you guys do enjoy it I had a lot of fun doing the challenge um, but at some time it, it did get pretty tedious so hopefully you guys do enjoy it but anyways I'll get right into the video instead of boring you guys um, but snow run has a base stat total of 300 and each stat has 50 so like defense special defense all of those are all 50 I had on screen for you guys um, in gen 3 snow run had an extremely shallow move pool only really knowing ice type moves dark type moves and normal type moves which kinda sucks honestly but like I just have access to things like blizzard and crunch which will become a lot handy later down the line also Snowrunt can learn Toxic through TM, so once you find the uh, Toxic TM, we will put that to use. Uh, but Snowrunt is weak to Fighting, Rock, Steel, and Fire types, with no immunities, and Snowrunt is only resistant to other Ice types. That, that makes Ice type an extremely uh, hard Pokemon to use during a run like this, just because I have only one resistance, and that's Ice type, and I have no immunities to anything. So I have to worry about the Fire type Gym Leader, uh, the champion with steel types, the first rock type gym leader, and the fighting type gym leader. So they all have like a gym or a champion to go with each of those types to deal with. So that's going to be kind of an issue. Um, so the rules for this run are is that I can only use snow run during battle, with the exceptions for the gym leaders Tate and Liza, which will not battle you in Moss Deep City unless you have two Pokemon in your party. Uh, to fix this, all I had to do was put a weak Zigzagoon in my party along with Snow Run. This didn't change the, the tide of the battle. Uh, it was it was a sweep either way, just because of the fact that um, they were Psychic type and I had um, a Dark type move. So that helped out a lot more than um, I thought it would. But the Zigzagoon didn't do any damage to begin with. I made sure that it stayed and only did like Growl because I didn't want to do damage. Also, I will not be doing any glitches throughout this entire run. I don't even know any glitches to begin with, but um, if I did, I wouldn't be using them either way. It's just putting that, like, you know, out of the way. Um, this video took me again a week to record, so hopefully you guys, you, you guys do enjoy these Pokemon challenges. Um, if you guys do want to see more of these challenges, like and subscribe and tell me in Discord. Um, link in the description or in the comment section. Any other challenge I should do regarding Pokemon or whatever, like tell me the game, the Pokemon to do it in. As only if you guys really enjoy these challenges, if you guys don't, I'll do other content as well. Uh, again, I'm trying to wait until Pokemon Sword and Shield comes out. That's coming out soon. Um, without further ado, let's begin. Using the Pokemon Randomizer, I was able to replace Mudkip with Snow Run, so our rival would pick a Trico. So we can deal super effective damage during rival battles because Trico is a Grass type and Snow Run is an Ice type, so we'll deal two times the damage. But after heading north, we do enter our first rival battle. Um, all I really did was just spam Powder Snow the entire battle just because Trico is a Grass type, and that makes it weak against an Ice type. So making the battle a completely an easy win. Um, but after the rival battle, I go back to the lab, get five Pokeballs, and then I go and catch five Zigzagoon with the ability Pickup. Now, Pickup is an ability that will make a Pokemon pick up an item after KOing a Pokemon. Uh, it works for wild Pokemon. I'm pretty sure it works for trainer battles as well. I'm not sure though, but these items can range from super potions to ultra balls to rare candies. Now, we want the rare candies to speed up grinding because we can get like an extra five levels out of rare candies from one grinding session um, than we, we would with having no pickup Zigzagoons in our party. Now these will will never battle, I'm never going to have them battle in the game, I'm just going to have them just for pickups. Eventually I put them into my PC um, in exchange for Pokemon that no HMs. Those don't get used either ways, I'm not, I'm not using them in battle either, For I'm only using them for HMs to go through the game because Snorunt cannot learn moves like... Um, uh, rock smash strength um, and like surf and stuff like that but 
uh, moving on, the first gym leader, the first gym battle at least, was against Roxanne, her rock type Pokemon. Geodude went down fairly quickly, but the real problem was her nose pass, and like the rock tomb, the rock through the no. Um, but after a little bit of grinding, I was able to beat her on my fourth try getting the stone badge. But the next gym was in Duford Town. This gym leader here was Brawly, and he specializes in fighting type Pokemon, which makes it the second gym in a row to be super effective against ice types, making it a little bit harder to start out with, but eventually it will get kind of easier moving on to like the flying type gym leader and etc. But this uh, gym battle took me only about six tries to beat. Um, I, I came up with a strategy of spamming double team to increase my evasionness, to dodge most of the fight type attacks. Um, a chop that he had went down fairly easily to take out um, Makuhita was the real problem though, because that was the second Pokemon. Um, I, was, I was able to dodge enough of his um, arm thrust that Makuhita eventually knew um, with the evasionist that I got from Double Team. I was able to win the Knuckle Badge. Um, but later we meet our rival for our second rival battle. This battle wasn't really that special either. The rival battles are really easy. Um, because all it really has is the Wellmer, a Numel, and a Grovile, which I was easily able to take out because I just spammed like Ice types attacks, which didn't really do that much against Numel, but Numel was a lower level and I was about like, 10 levels above what I was supposed to be, so it wasn't really that big of an issue. Um, and Grovile was really easy because of uh, my Ice and it being only a Grass type, so that helped a lot too. Next up was Marvel City with the gym leader being Watson who specialized in electric type Pokemon. This gym took over 8 tries to beat, 4 tries and I realized that I can just grab more levels to get stronger and get more moves. The Magnemite and the Magneton he had uh, would always use Thunder Wave if you weren't paralyzed to paralyze you, slowing me down making me attack second giving me a major disadvantage against his steel and electric type Pokemon. Uh, so on the last try I decided instead of setting up a double team. Um, to avoid the attacks, I would just spam Blizzard, which eventually worked, and I got the Dynamo Badge. So next up we head to Mount Chimney and battle Archie from Team Aqua. The Team Aqua battles aren't really that important whatsoever, they're actually really easy. I actually cut out the last uh, Team Aqua battle during the Kyogre thing just because it wasn't really that important and it was extremely easy. Um, it only really took two tries this time, the only really issue was his final Pokemon, which is Sharpedo, which has the ability Rough Skin. Now Rough Skin deals damage to you if you hit it with a contact move. So it'll do like 1 16th of your damage, I'm pretty sure. If you do like a contact move like Tackle, Headbutt, Crunch. Um, but if you use like Flamethrower, which is like a ranged move, it will not um, set Rough Skin into effect. So for this part, I can either just tank the damage from the Rough Skin uh, by spamming Crunch. Or I can use Blizzard to win. Uh, but after I beat him, I head over to Lava Ridge Town to get our fourth bet. The gym leader here is Flannery, she specializes in fire type Pokemon, which should have been a problem for us being ice types, but I won it only within three tries. I thought it would be a lot harder of a battle, but the third try, I got a lucky freeze on Torkoal with Blizzard, making me just crunch it to death. That was really it. It was a really easy battle, I thought it would be a lot harder, but this battle didn't take nearly as long as I thought it was. And after three tries, I got the heat badge. Uh, right after, I got the heat badge. I run back to Petalburg City to battle the, uh, the gym leader Norman with a normal type Pokemon. Now, I think I recorded this on a Wednesday, and Wednesday I had like 20 minutes to record. I didn't really have that much time to record that day, because I was doing other stuff that night. Um, surprisingly, 
Within 20 minutes, I was able to run over to Paddleburg City and easily beat Norman within 20 minutes, first try, without even bothering to grind levels. I think I was around the same level as last time, um, but the next few gyms will be fairly easy as time goes on because you have like rock and psychics, um, flying types, which are extremely easy against an ice type, but towards the Elite Four will get a lot harder. Um, but after beating Norman, we do get the balance badge. And then we're on our way to Fortree City, and there's another rival battle on the way to Fortree City. This battle wasn't anything special. Um, my snowman was 20 levels above her entire team, making an easy win, so that was, wasn't really that big of a problem whatsoever. In Fortree City, we battled Winona and her flying type Pokemon. I beat this battle first try due to her entire team being weak to ice type Pokemon, and her Altaria, which is our last and final Pokemon, being four times weak due to being a flying and a dragon type. Um, but the next gym is in Moss Deep City, and the gym leaders here are Tate and Liza. Like I said before, they will not battle you unless you have two Pokemon in your party. So to fix this, I added the Zigzagoon to my team. I made sure it's not attack. But either way, I don't think it would have mattered if I attacked or not using the Zigzagoon. Because Lunatone and Solar Rock are both Psychic type Pokemon, all of them being Rock. And I had the move Crunch. Crunch is the Dark type move, which is super effective against um, the Psychic type Pokemon, Solar Rock, and Lunatone, making it an easy win. I think it took me about like three or four tries to, to do the entire battle. It wasn't that really big of an issue. Um, but after that, I went and stopped Team Rockwood down at the Seafloor Cave. Nothing really important happened here except for the fact that I KO'd the Kyogre accidentally for free XP. I kind of wanted to catch it just so I can have it in the PC just because it looked cool. I kind of like Kyogre but I accidentally killed it. Um, but I decided not to add the part where I battled Archie and all the other grunts there just because it was an easy sweep. I just spammed Crunch and um, Blizzard the entire time. And that was an easy win, just free XP the entire time. Um, and also in their like hour and a half of the entire footage was me wandering around aimlessly looking for the seafloor cave which I forgot where it was until I uh, looked it up on the internet so that helped. Um, but After going to Sutopolis City, after uh, battling Kyogre or whatever, um, I battled Wallace and his Water-type Pokemon for the 8th badge. This badge took me uh, 6 tries to get, 
Um, because I got Toxic from the Fiery Path to Toxic Stall the entire team. Um, and then we were off to the Elite Four, but to Toxic Stall, I would have to raise my evasion to super duper high by using Double Team, and then using Toxic and Crunch to eventually whittle down all this team to, you know, zero. But since he specialized in Water Type moves, Ice type was neutral against it, not doing that much damage, so I would have to use Crunch instead, and also Crunch is a higher um, accuracy, so it made the battle a lot easier.
After making a Pet Victory Road, I finally made it to the Elite Four. Uh, but previously, I grinded out in Victory Road on Zubat, Golbat, Makuhita, Hariyama, and Larons to get to level 70 to challenge the first member of the Elite Four, Sydney, and his Dark type Pokemon. This battle took me about 12 tries to beat just because of the fact that I kept getting walled by his Sharpedo. Now, this Sharpedo had rough skin, and after a while, I had to use a few X specials during the battle. Now, this is the first time I actually bothered using items during the battle just because. Uh, I thought the battle, was, I thought the entire run would be a good challenge if I didn't use items, but there was no rule against using items, so I only used like two of them. It wasn't that big of a deal. But after I got past the Sharpedo, I was able to get past the Zatsu Pokemon like Shift Tree and Absol pretty quickly with um, a few Blizzards. The next member of the Elite Four was uh, Phoebe, and she specializes in Ghost-type Pokemon. Now, this battle would have to be the easiest fight of the entire Elite Four. All I did was spam Crunch, which is a Dark-type move, against her entire team, which is made up of just Ghost-type moves, uh, not, not Ghost-type moves, Ghost-type Pokemon. Um, the only real issue was her Sableye, which is a Ghost and Dark-type Pokemon, and even that wasn't a big of a problem, because Sableye isn't one of the best Pokemon. And I can just use a few more crunches than I normally would to take it out. Um, it wasn't that easy compared to other, all the other ghost type Pokemon, but it was uh, the easiest battle of the entire Elite Four.
Next up was Glacia. Uh, now, to get past Glacia, it took me about six or seven tries. I had to Toxic Stall, which was just spam evasion moves so I can barely be hit. And then just use Toxic. Toxic the entire time. And then I used a few X specials to get in um, stronger crunches. Uh, also, I forgot to say this beforehand, I picked up the, the black glasses, which actually buff dark type moves for the battle. Um, just so I can make crunch a bit stronger, so I used crunch more than blizzard, because blizzard had lower PP. And um, crunch was 100% accuracy when uh, blizzard was only 70, which kind of sucked, but it did more damage though. Um, but after Glacia, Glacia was fairly easy, it was o it only being ice type Pokemon, and I'm resistant to ice type Pokemon due to my type, obviously, I'm not sure why I said that, but, uh... After that was Drake, Now Drake was even easier than Glacia. Not as easy as Phoebe, but um, I used a few X accuracies and X speeds and blizzards to take him out. Now his shield on was extremely annoying because all it would do was sit there and spam like rock throw, rock tomb, and protect. So it was kind of annoying, but it also gave me a, 
a lot of time to set up double team and all my X accuracies, X specials, and X speeds just to spam Blizzard um, and be able to hit every Blizzard throughout the entire battle because of all the X accuracies I, I had on me. Now the next battle was Steven. Steven took me over an hour, an hour to beat. He's a final um, battle for the entire game. Um, normally in Emerald, it's Wallace and it's Steven, but I'm just doing Sapphire, so this is just Steven. Now his team consists of many Steel-type Pokemon. Steel-type is the biggest problem for Snow Run right now in this run because of the fact that I can't Toxic them because uh, Toxic has no effect. It's Poison-type. It will not affect Steel-type. Also, Ice is very um, ineffective against Steel-type because of Steel uh, beats Ice instead of Ice beating Steel. But I used a few special uh, X-Specials and a few full restores to get past the Skarmory. It took me well over, I think, close to 20 tries, just about. Because um, what would happen is I would uh, use Blizzard twice and take out the... Um, Skarmory, use a full restore. And this is the only time I use full restore the entire game, I'm pretty sure, during a battle. And then I use full restore to um, dodge, not only dodge, but to tank uh, earthquakes from the clay doll. And then uh, every now and again, I would uh, use some evasion moves. So eventually, not being able to be hit by the clay doll earthquake, I would spam X specials, and I can just easily tank through and kill everything, which is crunches. Um, but this was the only time that the entire run I had to use full restores or any healing items besides for like beds and Pokemon centers and stuff like that. I think I was the only way I was able to beat it because Skarmory and Claydol were absolute walls compared to my level 70 um, snow run. It probably would have been easier if I leveled up a bit more, but I was way too lazy to grind out. I'm not sure why. Either I think I was just tired that night. It was late at night and I really didn't feel like grinding out a bit more levels to go to the Elite Four. But just like that... I was able to beat the entire game Pokemon Sapphire with only one level 70 snow run. Now, I, I could have maxed them out, but I didn't bother it. Um, now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Sorry that I stutter so much when I speak and uh, can't read properly. I mean, I can read properly, obviously, but I hate reading from scripts or reading aloud. Uh, normally, I like reading from not from scripts, but this had to be written down in the script. Uh, this script took me, like I said before, I'm not sure if I said before, but I had so many attempts on the script. Uh, like two, three hours to write this entire script. Um, and then the recording took over a week to record. That's why I haven't been uploading that much. I've been working on this for you guys. Um, and all I have to do is take the nine hours plus of footage and edit it into the video and just add the, uh, the commentary over it and then I'm done. But anyways, guys, hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys do want to see more Pokemon Sapphire, or not even just Pokemon Sapphire, Pokemon Runs or Pokemon Challenges like this, just like and subscribe. I'll be happy to do them. If you do have any recommendations for any other runs, leave it down in the comments below. I'll be happy to read you guys' comments. I'm hoping this video does a lot better uh, view-wise, just because of the fact that uh, I put so much effort into it. But anyways, if you guys do want to see more Pokemon Challenges like this, just like and subscribe. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye!